All right, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Chuck Doran, who is going to tell us about mirror, the mirror Clement Schmidt sequence. Go. Okay. Well, thank thank you, Tony, and thanks to all the organizers. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Um, I'm, I'm traveling all next week and, and I can't be gone from home more than a week at a time. <laughs> so um, in any case, what I want to talk about is, is um, this paper uh, joint with Alan Thompson to hit the archive in the fall. Um, we're adding on to it now um, and um, we would appreciate any comments people have uh, either based on this talk or based on the paper. Um, so the guide for the talk is going to consist of, first of all, background. And this is going to involve both perverse Luray, uh, spectral sequence, um, and the Clemens Schmidt. Uh, sequence. Okay, I'm going to be mostly black boxing perverse Luray. Uh, there are details in our paper, and of course, we cite the standard textbooks for this kind of thing. Um, next, we're going to talk about our mirror theorem. Um, and also a mirror conjecture. Now, the theorem is not going to depend upon a Calabi-Yau assumption. Uh, the mirror conjecture will. The mirror conjecture is going to be a variant of, of mirror P equal W that was introduced by um, Katzerkov, Pruskowski, and, and, and Harder. Um, we came at it from a different direction, and the connection between the two seems to be uh, the DHT uh, mirror conjecture, as we'll talk about later. Um, and then I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about examples um, which support this conjecture, um, both involving K3 surfaces, which you can already find in, in the existing uh, preprint draft, but then also Calabi R3 folds, which is um, going to go in the next version. All right. Um, so, background perverse array. Okay, so the basic idea here is that lots of data, oops, data about a vibration, say pi y to a base b, is encoded in its Lorelei spectral sequence. Okay, so E2 PQ is HP B R Q pi lower star Q, which computes HP plus Q YQ. Okay, well, that's the good news. Um, it abuts to the Lorray filtration. So GER, big L, L, H, K, Y, Q is, oops, uh, infinity page, K minus L, L. But here's the problem. So the problem is that the Luray spectral sequence only degenerates at E2 under very special circumstances. Okay, so example um, pi smooth or say B one dimensional. Okay, so the solution um, is to consider instead the perverse array spectral sequence. Okay, so the perverse array spectral sequence 
now we have um, E2, EQ is hypergonomology P, B. Okay, this is a mental perversity RQ, right or star rationals, computing H, P plus Q, IQ. Okay, um, and I said I'm going to black box this, but the good news is that there's actually a non kind of um, black box, a very geometrical version of this. Um, in 2010, uh, Mark Cataldo and Migliorini uh, gave a geometric interpretation of perverse the ray filtration. Uh, using what they called flag and delta filtrations. Okay, so there is sort of a, a, a somehow a lower brow, um, less high tech uh, approach to it as well. If you if you want to go that way, and that's useful in examples. Okay, um, the perverse array filtration. generates at E2 under much weaker assumptions. So for example, pi is protective, which is important for our applications. Okay, um, the other ingredient of background I wanted to mention is background on the Clemens-Schmidt sequence. Okay, so uh, for that, the starting point um, is a semi-stable degeneration. So let's let script X over delta, be a semi-stable degeneration. And for the benefit of anyone who is not familiar with the details here, let me just point out that by degeneration, we mean a proper flat surjective Morphism from a Kähler manifold to the complex unit disk delta with uh, connected fibers. of dimension n, and um, which is smooth over the punctured disk. So n smooth over punctured disk. Let's start. Okay. And semi-stable, so and, I want both these conditions, right? Um, semi-stable, um, we say the generation is semi-stable if X naught, the central fiber, so is um, the fiber over um, the origin, then X naught in script X is a simple normal crossings divisor. Okay, great. So what is the clemens schmidt sequence? Um, well, if we let uh, XT denote the general 
fiber. Then uh, the Clemens Schmidt sequence over Q. is um, the four term exact sequence of mixed knot structures okay so let me write this out I have enough horizontal room here um, so dot 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 I go to H k script X and then a perverse shift by one to HK limiting of the fiber XT to HK limiting of XT take twist by minus one to HK plus two x one and then dot dot dot. Okay, so let's see what everything is here. Um, I here, which I'm about to mention, is the embedding of x naught, the inclusion into x. Um, new here is the log of monotomy map. Um, this is I upper star. All right, um, so now. There's nice interpretations for everything here. This one here is by restriction um, HK of the central fiber X naught with uh, Deline's mixed hodge structure. On uh, a normal crossings variety. Um, this one here, we're going to have the usual cohomology of XT with limiting mixed knowledge structures. And then over here, we're going to have a Poincare dual to uh, H2N minus K of X with the mixed Hodge structure from um, H to N minus K X Q. Okay. And what's important for our purposes today is that the terms admit three filtrations. So what are these filtrations? Um, well, the three filtrations are the Hodge filtration, uh, uh, the weight filtration, um, W lower dot. And let me just comment about that quickly. So, um, on HK of X, so more to HK of X naught, uh, this encodes the structure of X naught um, built out of the cohomology of strata of the central fiber. Okay. And then on um, HK limb of XT, as I said before, uh, this encodes structure of uh, this new, so the graded pieces. Um, encoding the degree of no potency log of our drawing map. Okay. 
And the third filtration is, of course, uh, the perverse Luray. Okay, um, and for pi x delta, such that um, w dot f dot define a mixed hodge structure, uh, such a, okay, yeah, uh, these define a mixed hodge structure on um, the graded pieces. Of p dot. Okay, so better way to say that, um, which I couldn't find stated better in the literature than in a recent paper, but of course the ideas of this go way back, and I don't want to slight anybody who, um, uh, who who I should be citing here. But I'm going to cite the recent paper of Kerr and Laza. So theorem um, Kerr and Laza. This is the dash. Uh, anyway. Kerr-Laza uh, 2021. And the statement is that the Clemens-Schmidt sequence is exact for P lower dot, W lower dot, upper dot, and is an exact sequence of mixed Hodge structures on the graded pieces. Of the perverse line filtration. All right, so that's the, that's the background, um, a very satisfying kind of background. It's a bit confusing at first because, you know, on the one hand, I'm talking about the generations, on the other hand, I'm talking about vibrations. Um, where, where does that come from? How does that all come together? Well, the way it comes together is um, in what we're calling the mirror Clemens Schmidt sequence. Okay. And to understand our motivation for this. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, can you clarify what is the perverse the refiltration on? Uh, you know, the way you defined it so far, it was only defined on, on one of the pieces of the dimension sequence, the script text. What is it on the nearby fiber, for example? Ah, okay, yeah. So, um, so we do this in the paper, but I, I have to say we're mostly just, well, how do I, how do I show it? Um, which, which step are we talking about here? I'm talking about the perverse that I say on XP, on the homology of XP. What is that? I'm looking for the right place here where you're talking about. So yeah, yeah. you're talking go about- oh, No, no, go, go to the page with the Clemens screen. Oh, I'm not, oh, oh, I see. You're talking about the, the, the Curlaza result? Yeah, the statement was that on the terms of the Clemens Schmidt sequence, there are, there is a perverse refiltration, but so far we've only defined it on the homology of the script things. Yeah, no, I'm mean, gonna have to double check that, but I think I think well, I mean, I would I would ask Robbie or or, or Matt to be certain, but um, I think the perverse array was induced on the fibers. I'm trying to remember how. Um, Oh, so so yeah, you are thinking about the terms of the Clement Schmidt as homology of nearby and vanishing cycle. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And no, there's no this, this this result. Just to be absolutely clear, this result is is I don't think they're claiming to any any not great novelty. No, no, no. I, I, I got what. Okay. Yeah, they just they just cleaned it up. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not saying that I'm quoting some um, uh, recent breakthrough. I'm 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 just quoting a cleanly stated summary of 20, 30 years of of. Uh, of stuff that people have done. Yeah. Okay. So then what is the motivation here? Mirror Clemens Schmidt sequence. Uh, what is our what is our mirror motivation? Uh, why are we talking about the generations on one hand and vibrations on the other? Okay, so this all comes from um, what you could call the, the, the DHT mirror philosophy. Um, 
Um, I think I actually wanted to call this thing the, the, the gluing splitting mirror conjecture, but whatever name stick. Um, and the basic philosophy here is that degenerations are mirror to fibrations. Okay. Um, and this is distinct from the say SYZ uh, or philosophy or whatever. This is this is really in a context um, of, of really algebraic geometry. I'm talking about the generations that as algebraic geometers we care about, um, and uh, vibrations as algebraic geometers. In other words, the kind of input that goes into the two uh, bits of the background that I've already talked about. Now, what's a, what's our motivation for something like this? Where did this come from? Well, imagine that you have say a Calabi-Yau n fold. Okay, um, and you degenerate it in a really simple way that a Turin type degeneration. So what is that? That's gonna degenerate it into a pair of quasi Fano. So I'll say quasi Fano two and quasi Fano one, uh, quasi Fano varieties um, intersecting on a Calabi-Yau n minus one fold. Okay, um, and Andre Turin, I think it was, in, in Fano lectures, or this last, last public lecture that I know of, um, he, he proposed um, smoothing these kind of configurations, uh, intersection of pair of quasi Fano's and Calabi-Yau as, as a great way to construct um, Calabi-Yau manifolds um, in one dimension higher. Um, and he wanted to know how this all tied into the mirror, uh, the mirror story. And so the DHT mirror philosophy is sort of an answer to that question. Um, the idea is that we consider uh, for each of the quasi fanos and think about it, if you like, as a, as a Fano with some moderate blowing up. In the case of three folds, you have to blow up a curve. We'll see later. Um, each one of these gives rise to a Lando Ginzburg model over A1, okay, LG2 over, over A1. Um, and what we propose in various categories and use various technologies is that there's a gluing of these two Lando Ginzburg models over A1 to a fibration over P1, um, whose fiber would be the mirror, Calabi L tilde, I'll say, uh, N minus one of this uh, Calabi L, that's the, the intersection Calabi L, the two quasi Fanos, and whose total space, naturally enough, is the mirror of our Calabi L N full. Okay. So now you immediately see the, the, the rationale for why we're interested in, in understanding the mirror, mirror of Clemens Schmidt. Clemens Schmidt is this absolutely central uh, cohomological result associated with generations, and in particular the generations of Calabi Yaus. Um, and so we really ought to see a mirror story involving vibrations. Okay. So um, that brings us to really the second half of the talk, which mercifully I have um, already written down. Okay, so our goal is to find a mirror to the Clemens Schmidt sequence. Um, <clears throat> and here's the setup. Okay, so we'll let um, Y be a smooth projective complex variety. I want B to be the smooth projective complex variety with fixed embedding into projective space. Okay, so this polarization is going to be critical for us, it's really important for the, the whole theory. Um, pi from y to b, a projective surjective morphism to that base. And then, as I said, I, I have this fixed embedding into pn, so I can take um, an intersection with a hyperplanic, a general linear subspace intersection of b with, um, so an intersection of b with a gen generic general hyperplane in pn. Once I do that, I cut out, I call it c, but you know, whatever, it's, it is what it is. Um, and if you take the pi inverse of the c, well, that's our z. Okay. Now, a priori, Z doesn't have to be connected, but that doesn't matter. What we're all, all we're going to do with it is we're going to subtract, you know, remove Z from Y, and the complement is going to be our our open U. And then now those are the Y and the pi and the B and the U that that we we saw in the discussion earlier, um, the setup. Okay, good. So here's our theorem. First main theorem about this the subject. Um, there is a four term long exact sequence for P, W, and F 
okay, as an exact sequence of mixtage structures on the graded pieces of the perverse array. Um, and the terms look a little funny, okay. Um, we have a map from compactly supported HK of this complement to uh, HK of Y. We have a cut product, and there's actually a wonderful quote which we reproduced at the beginning of our paper. Let me see if I can. No, I don't have it handy. Um, there's a wonderful quote from um, a paper of, of De Cataldo and Migliorini where they, they comment on, on certain superficial similarities, at least, between this cup product behavior they were observing um, and um, the, the, the new, <laughs> the, the law of monodromy map. Um, and what we're claiming is basically that this, uh, this similarity is, is not an accident. It is coming from your symmetry. Okay. Um, and then, you know, the other terms are, are shifted by two index, and that's to be expected because the same thing was true for Clemens, for Clemens Schmidt. Okay, so the proof, uh, which I won't give, um, you can read the paper, it's relatively short once you know all the technology. And in fact, it's a very easy consequence, I, I, I think, at some level of um, the hard work that, that Di Cataldo and Migliorini put into their, their theory. Um, the proof uses a sort of interlacing of localization long exact sequences, okay? So for those of you who might have seen Alan Thompson give, give talks of this in our pre-preprint days, um, the idea was that there were these, these intertwined long exact sequences like this. And I've just schematically, I haven't even told you what they are, but schematically I indicated, you know, you have your U's and your Y's and your, your various degrees. Um, and what one has to do is one has to construct the corresponding, the corresponding maps um, and turn these into the, the sequences you're after. Um, when I gave this talk at Ohio State, Herb Clemens invited me to speak there, and and uh, you know his his comment at this point was this was remarkably similar to the kinds of diagrams that he and Wilfred were drawing in Wilfred's apartment in New York <laughs> back in the in the seventies, I guess. Um, so in any case, it it, it is um, not as I said not a difficult proof, but but um, it's it's moderately technical because it relies so heavily on on the Cotel and the Um Okay, but once we have this result, okay, you want to write, work out examples and explicit examples of families of calabi degenerating and calabi fibrations. And, and fortunately, from a, a large amount of work that I've done over the years with uh, my former students and postdocs, um, we have a data bank of these things so that we can draw upon. We have a complete classification of a certain type of lattice, uh, lattice polarized K3 surface fiber Calabia three folds that plays really well with Hodge theory and geometry. Um, and um, uh, we you know, know quite a lot about, about um, uh, these examples uh, involving K3 surfaces and Calabia three folds. Based on those examples alone, we formulated which, something which we certainly didn't call mirror P equal W until we, we, we compared it to something in the literature. But um, what now we'll call mirror P equal W conjecture uh, motivated by this mirror Clemens Schmidt theorem. So, specific to the Calabi Yau case, and our previous theorem was not, but this conjecture is let's let X and Y be a mirror pair of Calabi Yau n folds. Okay, and, and they should play the role of, of the um, X's and Y's in the previous discussion. We'll suppose that X undergoes a semi stable degeneration over a disk so that nu is, its, uh, is no potent of index M. So I'm thinking type M degeneration in the sense of type two degeneration, type three degeneration. Um, that's, the, uh, that's the spirit of this. Um, then three things. Okay, so first, um, even if it's not built into the hypotheses, the fact that X is semi-stable degenerating should mean that Y, its mirror, is actually fiber over a base B where the dimension of B is M minus one. Okay, one less than that, that index of no potency. Um, not obvious. Um, secondly, if you look at the dimensions of the various uh, graded pieces, now, of course, this notation is a, is a bit hideous, but, but let me just say what it is. I mean, it's, it's not, not too difficult. You have these, these three filtrations, and so you're slicing and dicing uh, with your, your, your P, your W, and your F. Um, and so for each HK, you're going to be, you're going to be identifying these decomposed, decomposed, decomposed uh, uh, um, um, uh, dimensions. And the point is this sliced and, oops, that wasn't good. This sliced and sliced and diced um, dimension here um, associated to Y 
is exactly equal to this one. This is what our, our, our claim is. Um, moreover, um, and of course, this is referring then to the generic fiber uh, of the, um, or the generic Calabiao in the semi cellular generation. And this is referring to the, 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 the mirror uh, Calabiao Y. Um, and here on this side, we have a statement about um, the total space of the semi stable degeneration um, and that U, that complement uh, that, we, that we talked about earlier, the complement of pi inverse of, uh, of C. All right. So it's a bit hard to swallow um, in terms of the notation. Um, and again, if we hadn't done lots of examples, we would never have guessed it. Um, but once we guessed it, <laughs> We realize that, and this is hence the name um, of, of mirror p equal w, we realize this seems to be a Calabia version of the mirror p equal w conjecture for Fano manifolds and LG models that was uh, stated in the paper by Kotzer, called Prakowski, and, and Harder in, in 2020. Um, and this can't be accidental. And you ask yourself, well, what is the relationship, possible conjectural relationship, uh, between, on the one hand, Fano manifolds and Calabi-Yaus. On the other hand, LG models and Calabi-Yaus. And in the context of at least the level of technology we're using here, that is DHT. So what we propose is that the link between the two conjectures is the DHT gluing splitting construction that I alluded to earlier. Okay. Now, of course, that leaves a lot unsaid. You, know, you have to decide what level of technology you're using to address this, what level of generality. Um, I have conversations ongoing, research ongoing with David Favero and Feng Long Yu using um, a, a rather you know, different uh, level of technology to address the same questions, in which case some of these questions might just pop right out um, as, as, as an easy consequence of general theory. Um, but in any case, this seems to be the, the connection between the two, uh, the two statements. And it sort of highlights once again, the notion that what DHT emphasizes and really I would say the, the, the core idea goes back to Turin's original lecture um, is that Calabia manifolds should be thought of um, as being assembled through various processes. Um, in his case, it was um, running the Turing generation backwards as a smoothing, um, assembled from more fundamental, simpler pieces um, and, and um, suitable blow ups of funnel manifolds, blow ups and unions, um, or also on the mirror side, gluing LG models to build internal, internal Calabia fibrations. Okay, so that's that's the con conjectural part there. Um, now let's get really, really concrete. Okay, so where is the actual evidence supporting this? And in fact, a lot of what I'm about to state, as I said, is stuff we computed en route towards figuring out what the correct statement of that conjecture should be. So let's take a, a special kind of type two generation of K3 surfaces, a Turing degeneration. So we're gonna have our, our our general K3 surface XT degenerating to a, a specific uh, uh, K3 surface X0 or a degenerate K3 surface. So, so it'll be a union of two rational surfaces intersecting on a common elliptic anti-canonical curve. Okay. Um, so if you like, we're talking about mirror symmetry for K3s and on the other side, we're expecting to see genus one vibrations. All right. So the mirror K3 surface Y to XT does admit a genus one vibration. And we saw this already, we stated this already in our original paper, uh, um, the, the results I announced in string map 2016 and, and Sanya, and, and we published uh, uh, afterwards in, in the proceedings, um, 2016, 2015, 2015. But the talk was in 2016 because Yao moved the conference to January, or December and January. So it was technically, January 2016 when I gave the talk. Um, but in any case, the point is that um, we checked back then using simple results on lattice polarized K3s and Dolgachev, Nikula, and mirror symmetry um, that, X, that X, the, the, the mirror K3 surface Y, XT, admits a genus one vibration, you know, square zero class in the polarizing lattice, if you like, uh, pi from Y to P1. Um, in the context of today's discussion, if we view the base B as embedded by isomorphism into P1, then, well, the hyperplane class in, in P1 is just uh, giving us a point. So Z is really just a general fiber. And in that case, we've already verified the conjecture back in that old paper. So that was um, definitely something that, that, that works well. Um, okay, 
you can take K3 surfaces though and sort of move it in this type three direction. So it's a more serious degeneration. Um, now, you always have a choice when dealing with classes of examples involving K3s, you know, do you want to, because there's different ways of making K3 surfaces simple, okay? One way to make a K3 surface simple for certain purposes is to have its Picard rank be small. Another way to make it simple for other purposes is to make its Picard rank be large. Um, and if you make it too large, and you make it Picard rank 20, well, then it's sort of these most algebraic K3s, and you're not going to be able to have non-isotrivial families of them. But if you go just shy of that to, to Picard rank 19, you get families of, of, of lattice polarized K3s that behave in many ways very similarly to, to elliptic curves. And, and there's fundamental reasons of, uh, associated to the so-called shear NSE construction that, that justify that. Um, but in particular, if you take XT, a K3 surface in the generation to be polarized by this lattice, it's H plus E8 plus E8 uh, plus minus 2K, um, what we might call the, the MK lattice, right? Um, then a relatively recent result, Hulek and, and, and Lisi uh, in 2019, uh, shows that, that XT actually admits a unique up to flops, primitive type three degeneration uh, to X naught with the property that it's got 2K triple points, 3K double curves, and K plus two components. Okay, so this is really, really nice. I mean, in some sense, some of these ideas go back to uh, uh, Friedman and Scatone, and, and, and it's anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful paper. I suggest you look at it. Um, with this, we can, for example, compute uh, these sliced and diced uh, 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 graded pieces. Um, and if we do that in this particular case, uh, let's just take um, the uh, one for the F, the two for the W, and the two for the P uh, for H2, you find that that dimension has a geometrical interpretation as the number of components minus one, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be K plus one. Okay, so that's not, that's not surprising, but let's remember the 2K and 3K for later. Um, okay, what's the mirror? Well, the nice thing about these um, so-called MK uh, polarized uh, uh, K3 surfaces is that they're precisely mirror to, to, to the lattice polarized K3 surfaces. They're precisely mirror um, in the Bogotá de Coulin sense or whatever sense you like to 2K polarized uh, K3 surfaces. Okay. So um, the mirror is a generic K3 surface of degree 2K. So it contains a smooth ample curve Z whose genus is K plus one, defining a finite morphism um, to a, a base B with dimension of B equal to two. Okay, sweet. Um, but now we have to make the counts work. So we have to go to the other side and look at the sliced and dice graded pieces. And this is the corresponding one and the computation we're matching here, according to the conjecture, turns out to be a compactly supported homology on U that we have to work with. Um, and you do the calculation and what you get is precisely the genus of, of that curve Z, which is K plus one. And that verifies the conjecture in this case. Um, now, of course, you know, you can give geometrical interpretations to essentially every sliced and diced uh, 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 piece, every, every sort of refined entry in this, in this multi-dimensional Hodge diamond, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and um, it, it does work. You're able to you know, prove that, that everything matches in these examples. Okay, um, this is great, but what about higher dimensions? Oh no, I'm not ready for that yet, sorry. <laughs> what about base change? Okay, so it's natural in this context, given a generation um, uh, X over Delta to consider a base change. Let's say it's the, um, you know, the map from, from Z to Z to the mu, right? Um, and then of course, a degeneration is primitive if it's not a base change of a smaller one. But what does this actually mean in, in concrete terms for the type three degenerations that we just looked at? Well, I said, remember the 2K triple points, the 3K double curves and the K plus two components. Well, here's what happens. Your 3K double curves become, give you 3K times mu minus one components after base change. And the 2K triple points give you, well, work out the algebra, it's k times mu minus one times mu minus two. So when you work out the total, 
It's your k plus two you had before plus these, which works out neatly to k mu squared plus two. And one less than the, that number of components is supposed to be the dimension of this, of this um, um, you know, sliced and diced graded piece, right? The one, two, two here. Um, so that's k times mu squared plus one. And now we have to check on the mirror side. So for the mirror, well, what's the mirror gonna be of our base change? It's gotta be something ridiculously simple. It's something that's characterized by the single integer mu. Well, the answer, as I said from the beginning, is you know, very sensitive to, to that embedding and projective space we talked about. And the answer is to re-embed the base by the degree mu of our easy. Okay. And when you do that, the Z we, we had before is replaced by a smooth curve and a linear system uh, mu times Z. And the genus is K times mu squared plus one. And that's, that's the answer. That's the, that's the dimension of the graded piece. And of course it agrees um, with the answer we got on the other side. Okay. So what we're concluding here is that base change of the generation is really mirrored to a re-embedding of the base of the mirror vibration via, via the Veronese. Chuck, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Can you just summarize what what the spaces are involved now? Like remember? Oh yeah, yeah. So what is the yeah? What, where, just remind, where so, is so, the higher genus yeah, curve? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we're talking about the K three case here, right? Okay. So the degeneration here is a family of K threes of lattice polarization type M K. So the mirror is a 2K polarized K3 surface, right? So, I mean, you know, take K equal two if you want to keep it simple. And then it's M2 polarized K3 surfaces that are degenerating. And it's um, the, the, the quartic K3s on, on the mirror side, right? So all that we're saying here is that um, for this type three degeneration um, of, an, of an M2 or an MK um, uh, polarized vibration, we're keeping track of, of what's happening um, when we did it back here. We kept track of what was happening on the generation um, to the, the singular behavior. And of course, remember we had to do a semi-stabilization. So we have to keep track of the Im impact of that on the component count, right? But here it was, it was fine, it's K plus two components. And so K plus one was the contribution, was the, um, uh, the, the meaning of the, that dimension uh, graded piece, okay? The, the point was, and, and when we checked the, the, the matching there, okay? The point was anytime you have a, 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 um, a, a script X, right? Um, you're over delta, right? With the central fiber over zero and you can do the base change, right? And so it, once you do the base change, which is completely natural to do on the level of the sort of standard uh, Clement Schmidt side, right? Um, what's the mirror? And it was a, you know, a very reasonable question. I mean, if you're studying elliptic surfaces, one of the very first things you do is understand how, how the Kodaira types behave under base change, right? Well, okay, this is the generalization of that, of that statement where the fibers happen to be K3 in our example. Um, and you trace it through, as I said, and the conclusion is that un under base change, it really amounts to a re-embedding of the base, right? It can't change the dimension of the base. That was fixed. By, by the you know, other properties, the degree of no potency, we're still type three, but something changed. And what changed was, oh, okay, in the, in the theory, re-embed B using the degree mu Veronese, then redo the calculations, a la the Cataldo Migliorini, what have you. Um, in this case, they have concrete interpretations in terms of the geometry of the, of the generation. Um, but in any case, the, the moral, you could call this a conjecture more generally if you like, is that base change is mirror to re-embedding uh, of the base uh, via the Veronese map. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. But I'm still confused as to like, I just wanna know when I re-embed the base, I don't yeah. remember what that means in terms of the space. Like what? What right. is the mirror now when I re-embed the base? Where is this curve? Where is this higher genus curve? Where is the higher genus curve? 
I don't remember. It, it's it's, it's, in, it's in this linear system. I, I don't understand. But Z is Z is the intersection of what and what, or is it? Okay, so Z here. Oh, yeah. Go back. I'll go back. I close my page. Not that Z. That's a different Z. <laughs> So Z here is the curve that had genus K plus one, right? Yeah. So it's the polarizing curve of the mirror K3 of degree 2K. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, so think cortex if you want, right? So okay. then it's a quartic court K3 surface in D3. Take your hyperplane section. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, but you see right away, right? I mean, obviously, the if you're if you're inducing um, uh, quantities that contribute to your 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 sliced and diced cohomology um, through what amounts to a hyperplane section of, of the embedded embedding and projective space, then it's obviously very sensitive to that embedding and re-embedding. It's really nothing more in this sense. Is really nothing more than taking, um, you know, this kind of linear system, re-embedding via the Veronese. So anyway, this was a nice thing that we illustrated just in the context of, of, of K threes to, to show what happens. But you could say, oh yeah, this is a, a basic principle. As soon as you start talking about the Clement Schmidt story for X, you have to ask, well, what happened with the base change? And since we're talking about the mirror story, we're telling you it's 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 re-embedding via the Veronese. Okay, but this is all surfaces, and and I would say a deficit of the current draft of the paper is that um, uh, we don't give more examples in higher dimension. Um, let me talk in the time that remains. I think I have about nine minutes um, about the Calabia threefold case, specifically everybody's favorite Calabia threefold, which is the quintic Calabia threefold X. Okay, so here you have a pair of of, of Turing generations. They come from the very important formula that five is one plus four and five is two plus three. Okay, so it's degenerating your your quintic uh, threefold in P four uh, into um, a hyperplane and, and a quartic threefold, um, whose intersection is of course a, a quartic K three surface. Um, and then alternatively, you're, you've got this um, a quadric surface and this I'm sorry quadric threefold and cubic threefold. And their intersection is um, a, a degree six um, um, uh, K three surface. Okay, so, so that's that's great, and that comes from the fact that five is two plus three, and six is two times three. And okay, anyway, it's um, elementary arithmetic to, to sort of justify that. Now, of course, one has to do a little bit of work with these to make the natural term generations. You have to do some blowing up. In both cases, you need to blow up one component. Either component doesn't matter. In a, uh, up to by rational equivalence. In a curve C given by intersecting the corresponding um, Z, ZI with a hypersurface of degree five. So, for instance, it's, it's a degree 20 curve that you have to blow up in this, in this first case because four times five is 20. Okay. Um, now you do the work, okay? And you, you check that in, in such a situation with lobby of three folds, the filtration's dimensions depend on three parameters, call them U, V, and W. Um, here, W is H2 of X. V is the sum of the H2 ones of the two components of the Turing generation. And mu is 20 minus the rank of the induced lattice polarization on the double K3. Okay. So with the notation that we had in our, our, our preprint on the archive, um, you can write down the comb for the cohomology of X with limiting mixed structure, exactly what um, the, as I said, slicing and dicing of these graded pieces are. So we organized it by, you know, degree graded pieces for, for uh, perverse array, but then for each one of those, of course, you get a table um, and that's gonna have um, the, the two possible values or the uh, specializations of uh, the W and F. Um, okay, in any case, you then do the same thing for the cohomology of the total space um, and you work out the filtrations. And again, everything depends upon these three quantities, um, U, V, and W. Okay, but um, what are the actual numbers in the case of, of, of the quintic uh, with its two degenerations? 
Well, it turns out they're 181 and 19 for each of them, okay? Um, and the only tricky one to compute uh, is V, okay? So remember V is the one that the, comes from the H2 ones of the two components of the Turing generation. Um, not surprisingly, because we had to blow up a complicated curve, um, but it's not bad. It's just the sum of the, the H2 ones, the original components, plus the genus of this one curve. So you work it out and then um, you have it one for the, the split to one plus four, another for the split to two plus three. Um, and you get these nice, these nice descriptions. And of course, notice that 30 plus 51 is 81 and then 76 plus five is, is 81. So everything's behaving as it should. Um, and then what about the mirror? Well, the mirror story, um, I'm sorry, I left out a parenthesis here. Um, well, the mirror for W is, is uh, H21 of Y, uh, it was mirrored to really what amounted to an H11, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, v turns out to be the sum over all the fibers of the number of components of the fiber minus one. Um, and again, this looks a whole lot uh, similar to um, formulas that have been kicked around for ages involving elliptic vibrations uh, 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 and for elliptic surface theory that, that you may, may be familiar with. Um, and then U is the rank of the monodromy of variant lattice polarization on the K3 fibers. So um, I won't go through the details, but we verified the mirror P equal to W prediction here uh, for the Quintic for both Turing generations. And in fact, there are similar more complex calculations that we've done um, that apply to the more complicated generation of the Quintic, five equals one plus one plus three, Okay, into the union of two hyperplanes and a, and a cubic threefold. Um, and now the mirror is um, a Calabria threefold Y, which is fibered over a, a surface base B. That's a genus one vibration. And as you might expect, all of the details uh, of, of these uh, cohomology calculations um, are encoded in the structure of uh, the detailed elliptic vibration there. And you have to worry about the way in which the discriminant components intersect. And, and it's a lot of work to be done, but it works. And, and so we're able, to, we're able to show this. And just to be absolutely clear, what's really special about this situation and very nice um, is that this degeneration we're talking about here, okay, actually you can think of as coming from our um, X1 union, X, oops, that's supposed to be a four, X4 and X2 union, X3. Okay, to X1 union, X1 union, X3. And on the mirror side, well, the lattice polarizations of the fibers for the X1 union X4, as I said, you get an M2. For the X2 union X3, as I said, you get an M3, um, um, lattice polarized K3s. And these two lattice polarizations share an elliptic vibration, okay? And, and that common elliptic vibration, that elliptic vibration you can define which is compatible with both um, is what's underlying the mirror um, geometry, Y over B uh, mirror to this, this picture here. So it's a beautiful story. We'll, we'll tell um, the details of the threefold case in the updated version of the paper in the archives soon. Chuck. Yeah. Is the base B P113? Ah, <laughs> let me get back to you on that because there's some serious subtleties having to do with um, you know, what you have to do to make sure that you get an actual vibration instead of having um, um, the dimensions not work out for the fibers. So, so let, me, let me get back to you on that, but yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, any other questions? So. Chuck, just to follow up on that, I assume you're thinking of the base as P2, P? Um, yeah, or some question. blow up? So, so in fact, you know, there are two versions of this vibration. One described in my paper with Mamendia, another described in a paper with um, Feng Long and Jordan. Um, and there's a birational map relating the two. Um, and the one with Feng Long and Jordan is more natural for this purpose. Um, but the base being P2 would lead, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, it leads to a problem with, um, uh, you know, 
with dimension jumps and fibers. So, so you have to be really, really careful is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, so with, with uh, the analysis that we're adding to the, the paper um, Alan and I are doing, uh, we're, we're paying extra close attention to, to, to those issues. So, so that's, that's why I'm, I'm hedging a little bit because um, as I said, the same elliptic vibration over a open base is common to both of those two references. Um, but the nature of the choice of compactification differs between the two. And there's a preferred compactification here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Jake, can you <clears throat> say again, because I got a little bit lost at the end. X and Y are covariant threefold. Yeah, X, X is the quintic. And X Y is the quintic mirror. Yeah, so X, X is literally the quintic. That's, that's, um, that's the example, yeah. And uh, the Y over B, the, the genus one vibration has no multiple fibers? Uh, done right, it has no multiple fibers. Okay. That, but the done right is the hard part. So I'm, I'm, that's why it's not in the paper yet. <laughs> but, but we got it. It'll, 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 it'll get updated soon with the Calabria threefold stuff. But what's, as I said, what's really nice about this from my perspective is, you know, we have a sort of depth one Turing degeneration, and then we have a further depth degeneration. You know, we have, we have these two degenerations, which you think of separately, but then they both degenerate further to this guy, right? Um, and then, well, if this is supposed to be mirrored to something that has an elliptic vibration, but well, where's the elliptic vibration? How does it relate to the K3 vibrations that are mirrored to these two? Oh, all it is is that you have lattice polarizations on these K3s with a, an elliptic vibration that's compatible with both. Um, and, and so it's a geometrically incredibly beautiful picture uh, and, and uh, um, you know, one that certainly can be generalized and, and we fully expect the work for you know, the whole um, Columbia threefold setup. Um, but um, right now, all the details are only in place for the Quintic. But again, you know, we always start with the Quintic. That's the history of the subject. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, let's take that again. Thank you.